Hey, it's Mr. Alred, and we are graphing rational functions, and we have another practice problem. It is f of x equals the fraction numerator x squared minus x plus 2 all over x minus 3. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with our domain, which maybe you can look at very quickly, but we're going to set the denominator x minus 3 to be not equal to 0 which very quickly says the domain cannot use 3. And if that's the direction we go, the vertical asymptote is 3. So I'm going to drop it over here the best I can. And then I need to work on the horizontal asymptote. And that comes from my numerator and denominator exponent. So I have an x squared up top, so that m on top is 2, the n on bottom is 1, m is greater than n, so there's no horizontal asymptote. Okay. But <clears throat> if we don't have a horizontal asymptote, there is the possibility that we have an oblique asymptote. And when we look at that, we haven't had to look at it up to this point because we've always had a horizontal in the practice problems. But remember that we have an oblique if the exponent on top is exactly one more than the exponent on the bottom, and that's the case. So we're going to do polynomial division. We're going to say x minus 3 divided into x squared minus x plus 2. So in this, we always look at the leading pieces here, which is how many times will x go into x squared? I'm going to write it over here. x squared divided by x goes in x times if you reduce it. So the quotient there is 1x. So we'll multiply back. x times x is x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. And we're going to subtract that off. Okay, so x minus x squared is 0. Negative x minus negative 3x. So that's a subtract the negative, so that's a plus. So negative x plus 3x is 2x. Bring down the 2 from the end. So now we're dividing x into 2x. So 2x divided by x will give me 2. So that quotient part here is 2. Multiply back, 2 times x minus 3 will be 2x minus 6. Running out of room closely here, but at the bottom I get 2 minus negative 6, so I get 8. And we need to stop whenever the exponent of the remainder is less than the exponent of the divisor. So this is where we stop. So here is our glorious oblique asymptote x plus 2. So let's write over here, oblique asymptote, y equals x plus 2. So we got to graph that. So we need a y-intercept at 2, because this is an mx plus b line, and then a slope of 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. And I'm going to go the other way. And since I want a dotted line, I'm just going to use these points um, instead of trying to dash it out. So I'm just making a slope of 1 all the way across here. I guess I don't have to go all the way, but enough to be precise. So <clears throat> what we have here is one, we're going to graph it, what we have here is one single vertical asymptote at 3. So I need to know what happens to the left of 3 and what happens to the right of 3. So I'm just going to make another table like I've done every time before. So I need a number a little bit less than 3, maybe 2. A number a little bit bigger than 3, maybe 4. So let's go ahead and plug these in. So I'm going to do a little bit of math here. I actually think I'll pause it so I don't gibber while you um, try and figure it out. So we're going to find these y values, and then you can start back up. Okay, so the values I got here that I'm going to put on my graph, I, when I plugged in 2 for x, I got negative 4 for y. So let's see here. 2 for x, I got negative 4. So that may seem a little out of place, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's the highest point in here. So where it's trapped, it's definitely going to hug the vertical asymptote going down, but it's going to curve around some way 
and hug the oblique asymptote going to the left. Now, let me move this just a little bit if it helps. Okay, so for the 4, I got 14. So let me move this down a little bit. So my graph doesn't really capture that. My 14, I guess, would be up here somewhere. Um, so it's definitely going to go up forever. But I'm sure it comes down and curves around this way. So I ran off of the graph paper there, but this is the, the best we can do with what I've got. But what we can see is as we move to the left and to the right, that the graph is hugging that oblique asymptote similar to a horizontal asymptote and also that we're hugging negative excuse me positive three for x um, when we're very close to it okay thank you